A new Wordle puzzle is online. Click on the link to play. Listening to the following video may give you clues. Please like and share the videos. Court stays execution of Texas death row prisoner Melissa Lucio. The new evidence against Texas death row prisoner Melissa Lucio may exonerate her. Her attorneys have called into question the initial investigation and believe the confession was coerced. Lucio's attorneys also want an independent prosecutor to oversee her evidentiary hearing. And while they await the outcome of the clemency hearing, the family has been touring Texas to support her, and a documentary based on her story is slated for release in 2020. Melissa Lucio's attorneys say new evidence will exonerate her. Melissa Lucio is scheduled to be executed next week for the murder of her two-year-old daughter. She was convicted of killing the child 14 years ago and sentenced to death by lethal injection. Despite a growing movement for clemency, Lucio remains a convicted killer. The Texas jury sentenced her to death despite accusations that she had beaten her daughter to death. But her attorneys say new evidence will clear her name. The trial judge, Armando Villalobos, recently served years in federal prison for bribery and was running for re-election against a challenger. Lucio's attorneys say Villa Lobos was trying to make an example of her. Her family and attorneys maintain her innocence. And at least five of the twelve jurors, including the one who voted to sentence Lucio, have called for clemency. In January, the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles considered clemency for Lucio and commuting her death sentence and granting her a 120-day reprieve. The clemency petition was halted when the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles announced a stay of execution just minutes before the hearing. As a result, Lucio's case is back before the trial judge in Brownsville. Lucio's supporters question prosecutors' initial investigation. In response to the verdict, Melissa Lucio's supporters have raised questions about the police investigation and the initial investigation into the case. Lucio's lawyers questioned whether prosecutors' failure to disclose potentially helpful evidence led to a biased jury verdict. For example, her older children corroborated her statement that her daughter had fallen down the stairs. The prosecutor, meanwhile, denied that the evidence was improperly withheld, saying the evidence was not a basis for a conviction. In response to the decision, the Texas House of Representatives, led by Republican Representative Rick Leach, met with Melissa Lucio's attorneys, who had previously raised the question of the district attorney's investigation of the case. The two met in prison, and both parties argued that the district attorney was biased. Their meeting prompted the Texas Attorney General to review the case. In the meantime, Lucio's family and supporters are urging the Texas state legislature to vacate her sentence. The psychologist who investigated Lucio said that she had a pattern of psychological numbness and a history of abuse. Her daughters also testified to this effect, and this information was not disclosed in the original investigation. The psychologist's testimony was deemed irrelevant by the judge. However, the judge's ruling made the statement inadmissible. This case raises questions about the integrity of the police investigation. One of the most compelling arguments made by the defense is that the trial was unfairly influenced by corruption. The trial lawyer, who was sentenced to prison, failed to present evidence that could have acquitted Lucia. After the trial, the lawyer joined the DA's office, which complicates the process. While there are no hard evidences of this nature, the argument of bias against the trial lawyer is sound. The Texas Supreme Court sent Lucio's case back to the trial court. The attorneys argued that the state introduced false evidence. Additionally, they argued that new scientific evidence has disproved Lucio's claim that the marks on Mariah's back were bite marks. Further, Lucio's lawyers argued that Lucio's case was based on an incorrect investigation. This sparked a nationwide debate, and a long process of appeals followed. Lucio's attorneys say her conviction was based on unreliable and coerced confession. Melissa Lucio's attorneys argue her conviction for capital murder was based on an unreliable and coerced confession. Lucio's attorneys say the prosecution failed to present evidence to challenge her confession, and that she was tortured and abused. In addition, they say that the jury was misled by unreliable and falsified in South Innocence Project since Melissa Lucio was convicted of murder when the crime was actually a medical complication caused by a fall. 
Her lawyers claim that the prosecution failed to prove that Lucio had a mental disability. This case has attracted the attention of the legal community and has drawn widespread interest. Her lawyers say the conviction was based on an unreliable and coerced confession, and that it should be overturned Earth Texas Rangers are known for their unconventional interrogation techniques. One such interrogation method involved displaying Lucio a doll with bruises and asking her to strike those spots. Lucio admitted to hitting the doll. Her admission was framed as a full confession. It's unclear how prosecutors used her confession to convince the jury of her guilt. Although she had a felony criminal record, Melissa Lucio's lawyers say her conviction was based on an unreliable confession and unfair trial. Her first and second husband had violent, drug-dealing tendencies, and he abused her repeatedly when she was a child. She was married to Robert Alvarez, a violent alcoholic and drug dealer, and was pregnant at the time of the interrogation. The abuse was so severe that she had to give birth to seven children before she was 35. During the same time, Melissa Lucio was raped by Robert Alvarez. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals granted a stay of execution on Wednesday, which means the lower court will review the case. The case is scheduled for hearing on Monday, but it's unclear whether the governor will intervene. If Lucio is executed, she would be the first woman executed in the state since 2014. Lucio's attorneys want an independent prosecutor to handle her evidentiary hearing. The case against Melissa Lucio, a woman convicted of child abuse, will likely go back to court for a new evidentiary hearing. The defense has argued that the state used false evidence and failed to prove her innocence. The indictment against Lucio is based on her statements to police and her attorneys. The prosecution cites evidence of her sexual abuse. A federal court has granted Lucio's attorney's motion to replace Scenes with a new prosecutor. Scenes, who is an assistant district attorney, was Lucio's lead defense lawyer during her trial. The new evidence would be considered in court in months or even years. And it would go to the Court of Criminal Appeals for a decision. In the appeals, Lucio's attorneys argue that the prosecution suppressed evidence that could have helped their client. The attorneys also argue that the state failed to disclose evidence that would have helped the defense. For example, the prosecution failed to reveal a photograph of Lucio's older children that could have been helpful in their defense. As a result, the court ordered a new evidentiary hearing for Lucio. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles declined to comment on the petition and did not reply to requests for comment. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles has the authority to make decisions on clemency cases and has yet to make a recommendation on clemency. It is unclear when the new hearing will occur. However, the lawyers have been fighting for a new hearing. Melissa Lucio's attorneys want an independent investigator to oversee her evidentiary hearing. Their case is so flawed that the state may soon execute an innocent woman. Their attorneys say that she is not guilty of the crime and that the state could be about to put her daughter to death.